the story of the spring is building. And what a story it is. On a grand final weekend for the ages, racing's heavyweights stepped up in two states. Well done, mate. Well done. The Royal Blue of Godolphin and the partnership of John O'Shea and James McDonald claimed the two majors last weekend. The Epsom with a flying finish from Haraki. Flashing home is Haraki the outside. Then at Flemington, 24 hours later, with Hartnell in the Turnbull. Hartnell, ultra impressive, gonna canter in. Stunning, emphatic. The world's most powerful racing stable has thrown down the challenge. Today at Caulfield, there's another player in town. Chris Waller and his stable of superstars. Headlined by the mighty mayor, Winks. She's a champion, Winks! No horse has captivated a nation as much since Black Caviar. In the Caulfield Stakes today, Winks chases her 12th straight win and her 8th Group 1 victory. What a champion. All on her way to trying to defend her Cox Plate crown. Plus, the three-year-olds chasing Group 1 glory and big paydays in the Thousand Guineas and the Caulfield Guineas. This is the Spring Racing Carnival, and the superstars of the turf have come out to play. A great day to come to the Heath of Caulfield for what is a spectacular day of racing. It's Ladbrokes Caulfield Guineas Day, nearly $4 million in prize money, four Group 1 races, and stars left, right and centre. It is the day that New South Wales descends on Victoria and the other states as well, as we really do kick off the Spring Carnival as we welcome you. So in the two states today, there are 15 individual Group 1 winning horses. We've got the Mighty Winks, we've got the star of the spring so far here in Melbourne in Blackheart Bart, and we've got the Melbourne Cup champion, Prince of Penzance, all are lining up today. And we're everywhere today including Royal Randwick today we'll be covering two feature races there including the group one spring champion stakes along with the angst and all the races here so let's zoom in on somebody who I have missed in Francesca Kamani. Cheska great to have you back now, baby Harry, is he already taking an interest in racing? Well, Bruce, come on. He's going to have <laughs> absolutely no choice but to take a huge interest in racing. Um, yeah, so he arrived back in April, not long after the championships. Can't believe he's nearly six months old already. He's such a little bundle of joy, and he's going to be at home watching every single race today, so <laughs> we better do a good job. We better. He looks like he could get, do my job in a couple of years' time already. Now, you've got a Group 1 runner today. She's already a Group 1 winner, well-named in Global Glamour. You must be very excited about the Thousand Guineas. I am really excited about the Thousand Guineas. And it's such a good story, you know. A couple of years ago, the Magic Million sales, a few of us clubbed together. Well, actually, there's over 40 women in the, in the partnership. Women from America, Europe, Australia. And we thought, well, let's buy a horse. Let's have a bit of fun. Little did we imagine we'd already be Group 1 winners and one of the favourites going into the Thousand Guineas today. So, honestly, cannot wait. Come on, Global Glamour. We're all the way with you. Uh, let's go from Cheska in the mounting yard over to the track where Simon Marshall's loitering at the moment. How are you, Simon? I'm terrific, Bruce, because I'm right here in front of the winning post where millions of dollars will be won today. And we have some of the best three-year-olds in the land turning up here today at Caulfield. These thoroughbreds are all peaking for the Thousand Guineas and the Caulfield Guineas. Adelaide, Sydney, Perth and the Kiwis are here to take home the millions of dollars up for grabs. But the most intriguing race for me is the Caulfield Stakes. It's the three-horse field. Of course, the mighty Mayor Winks. We see her here for the first time at Caulfield. And it's the Battle of Tactics. Hugh Bowman rides Winks. We've got Brad Willa on the Junkyard Dog in Blackheart Bart. What will happen? Hey, folks at home, who are you picking? He or she? This is the gate that Winks will be entering the Caulfield race course this afternoon for her 22nd race on the racetrack. 15 of those, she's won seven at group one level she's going for her eighth today the last time she ran in melbourne was the cox plate of 2015 she smashed the track record i wonder what she's got in store for us this afternoon she's the queen of the turf she's the sentimental favorite let's hope later this afternoon she still sits atop her throne it's the big question mark, isn't it, Simon, about today's racing. As we have a look at the program, a dozen scratchings in total, so pretty light on. We start with that English Deputant Stakes, the Labrokes Herbert Power, an important race from a Caulfield Cup point of view, and then the Thoroughbred Club, the Catalina Sounds Weekend Hustler, 
uh, followed then by the Northwood Plume and then the Ladbroke Stakes or the Caulfield Stakes and then the Swips Thousand Guineas, the Ladbroke's Caulfield Guineas, all these Group 1 races, the IG Markets Turak Handicap and we featured the Mitsubishi Electric Scalacci Skates, a $400,000 race. A fascinating stuff. <laughs> This is the all-time list. So if she can win today, she jumps another 400 grand jumps in. So she's building, and if she could win a Cox Plate, she's getting up where Sunline sort of is. I mean, we're, we're getting to the real pointy stuff of all-time Australian racing. Oh, yeah, we certainly are. And racing always has to have a star. The star is what we, we all dream of and what we sell to people. Uh, where were you when Winx did, won last year's Cox Plate? Um, you know, hopefully today, this sort of match race, if you like, where were you when Winx won a Caulfield Stakes or possibly got beat? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of mares there. Now, Group 1 winners currently racing. This is just those horses currently racing. There's a few on three, but Black Art Bart's one of the few on three. She's on seven with Buffering. Chautauqua and Lankan Rupee, who's running next week, are on five. And the other one, Winning Streaks, which uh, she's on 11 at the moment, going for 12. We looked at some of the all-time greats. Interestingly, look at Burnborough. That 15th win was actually in the Caulfield Stakes, the same race she's running in. That was in 1946. That was his 15th consecutive. And when Ajax, who won 18 straight, won his Caulfield Stakes, it was his 10th consecutive. So Winks there getting up into the all-time list. She can get to where Tullock is at. So for our Western Australian viewers, you've got such a big interest in this race. Northerly's won this race in the past. Eurythmic, probably the best horse to come out of WA before. Northerly's won it three times. If you want to stay with us, go from 7-2. To Channel 7 right now. So he or she, we can see there. Hey, Richo, you, you've got Ollie with you. Uh, not riding here, but uh, maybe to talk about it, eh? Well, that's right. 109 Group 1s in his CV, so I thought he'd be the ideal person to find out the tactics for the jockeys. Anything he can sit behind. So I think I'm going to see him taking the lead up. Um, <clears throat> he'll probably look to increase it coming to the turn, I think. Um, and I think you'll see he or she uh, chasing them most of the way. Like that, would you would you think of like a Shane Dye, an octagonal, and a Chipping Norton who's sitting and then just took off a 1,000 out and end up pinching the race. Could that possibly play out? Well, there's a possibility of it. You know, it's a three-horse race, and um, I suppose Blackout Bart's had one extra run under his belt, so he's probably got a little bit more fitness on his side, but I still think the champion will be too good. OK, you rode him uh, in the Maccabi Diva. They went slow there and then sprinted, whereas the other races, when they go quick, he seems to like that better. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I actually think he likes a little bit of pace because he relaxes better. And Something that Winks doesn't usually do in a mounting out or Blackheart Bart in particular, particular those two to say are they on or are they off today are they are they normal and just taking this within their stride or is there something that's um, got under their guard and is irritating them so I'm really looking forward to seeing what the guys think as this parade takes place because there's been a lot of people around both horses down the back today that's going to obviously continue on with the close-knit mounting yard here at Caulfield so the guys will have a really good look and see that both these horses their mannerisms are spot on as they would expect now, Cheska, I can see you and Simon at the moment. So, Cheska, look back to Winks for a sec for us. Um, this will be the first time you see her for a while. I know she's a fair way away from you. You go to Black Art. What's your very first look when you see Winks now, Cheska? How does she look? She looks great. She's on her toes. She's come skipping into the mounting yard. She's got her hood on as usual. Um, just getting a little bit closer to her, but I, her, I think her coat looks really look. nice and shiny. Um, people quite often refer to her as the, the big mare, but she's not overly big. She's just a nice size. But she's really furnished and developed with age. And, look, I didn't get to see her much in the autumn. I was rather rather busy giving birth, but, yeah, she looks great. <laughs> You've got an excuse. We'll go back to her for a moment. Cheska, would you go back to Blackheart Bart for us? Uh, he's coming up towards you now because, look, he's a serious horse. He's won nearly $3 million. He's won three Group 1s. He's been the dominating horse in Melbourne this spring. He sure is, and I just love the story. 
Andrews. We heard from his owner earlier. Yeah, she was passed in in the sales room for sixteen thousand um, dollars, and was bought eventually for for twenty thousand. So he's that real like rags to riches story. He's just that real tough, gritty horse that doesn't know how to run a bad race. Um, and he's, he is stepping up to two thousand meters for the first time. But come on, he's trained by Darren Weir, who knows more than anyone how to train a stayer. He's a lovely looking horse. He's nice and calm. He's got a really big kind eye on him um, and I couldn't fault him. Simon, you've got the short straw. No, there's, there's Darren Weir who's done an incredible job with Black Art Bart. He's taken him from a very good horse to a uh, an outstanding horse. Now he or she, um, you've got the short straw because he is the big outsider. I mean, he's uh, short there on totes, but he's going to get out a lot further. How does he look, mate? Yeah, he looks terrific. Um, you can see that uh, he's got the blinkers on, which he has uh, to match his colours. Uh, he's walking out beautifully, you know. He's nice and bright in the eye. Uh, his ears are forward. He's really alert, looking at all the people in the mounting yard. He knows there's a big crowd here and uh, David Hayes has tuned him beautifully. He couldn't have uh, run much better. He sat fourth on the speed there last start at weight for age level in the Underwood behind Blackheart Bart. He had every possible chance. Black Art Bart followed him from the 600 metres, tracked him around the bend, peeled off him and beat him at set weight. So um, uh, he or she will probably sit back off Black Art Bart if it plays out that way and he leads today. So uh, I'm trying to look for a positive there, but um, I'd like uh, Craig Williams to be creative, pop off the fence uh, from behind Black Art Bart and Winks at the 700 and make it three in a row as they approach the 600. So, Cheska, let's go back to the, the mayor that's going for her 12th consecutive win winks. You know what I actually forgot to mention earlier? Um, Hugh Bowman's come out and said this week that he thinks Winx goes better left-handed. So she's done nearly all of her racing right-handed, she's done all her training right-handed, but he says that she settles and she breathes and she just rolls better going left-handed, which is a really interesting thing to, to bring into the race here and, and again going forward towards the Cox Plate. Look, I, she's parading really nicely here. She looks so bright. She's really taking, taking in the big occasion. Um, she's got her ears pricked. Um, she, honestly, she looks an absolute picture. Well, that's what all her fans want to hear, Cheska. Blackheart Bart, well, he was 4 rated to 4.20, just goes back out that turn to $4.40, and then he or she is obviously the outsider here in the three-horse race. Well, if she stays at $1.25, it's the longest price she's been this spring. She was $1.09 when she won the George Bain. She was $1.24 when she won the Warwick Stakes. So about that same price again today. So the Ladbrokes Caulfield Stakes, eh? There's been a lot of talk about this race. Three runners only, but boy. We have got the best in the business in Winx and we're about to see her strut her stuff. see what happens from there. And uh, Darren, what are you going to do? How are you going to spoil the party for the Mighty Mayor? Oh, I probably won't, I guess, but um, no, I, did, I was a bit like Chris. I had no instructions to Brad. I just said, work it out when the gates open and go from there, I guess. Well, these two horses used to be next to each other over in Perth, so they know each other. I hope they don't gang up on this poor little girl. Yeah, I was just chatting with their trainer and uh, we're, we're planning to. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck and uh, thanks for being great sports. Thank you. I think Richo's just got himself a selfie there with those three guys. Uh -huh. What a great shot. Uh, let's go to you, Ben. Ben Damon from um, Crown Bet. Uh, who's the market mover? Yeah, well, it's got to be Wings, but she is the longest price, as you mentioned, of the spring. The longest price since the Doncaster, in fact. So a dollar and 25 cents is the price you're getting about the champ at the moment. Blackheart Bart has just eased back out 4.20 to 4.40 and $31, if you like, he or she, for a huge upset. You would pay a lot of money have lunch with those three just to have three hours at lunch just to pick their brain do you know what if weary was there it'd be more than three hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well yes it wouldn't be it wouldn't be beer either okay you'd be playing top shelf but since he's had blackout bart he's had the eight starts with him with the four wins and three at group one level you know it's sprinting distances and then he stretched out to the 18 there last start so it's uh, the moment's arrived eh? it's been a big build-up sure has i know a dollar 20 seemed short but i think given what she's taking on and given her record it's actually relatively long and it's interesting that the the guys at crown bet um were saying yesterday that they're quite happy to kind of to lay her which is seems odd well it's been 546 days since she's been beaten it's a long time here we go 
Here's Greg Miles. Krieg unfolds. The gates are back. And they jump virtually as one. Blackheart Bart edging to the early lead and a very moderate tempo being set in the early stages. Winks up their second about a length and a quarter away. And he or she, as predicted, back at the tail end of the field. And there's certainly no fireworks in the early part. It looks like a track gallop through past the 1600. And Blackheart Bart try to control it here for Brad Rewitter. The question will be when will he wind it up? Probably from the time they get over the hill, he'll get going. He leads by a length and a half. Second on the outside, Winks Bowman's quite happy just to be idling along there about two lengths off Blackheart Barton. He or she almost a length at the back of the field. So the leader is staying pretty well away from the rails and he canters up towards the top of the hill at the 1,200 metres at a really leisurely tempo. So Blackheart Bart by two. Winks Bowman's just happy to sit in his slipstream at this point of the race. He knows he's got a superior acceleration under him and he or she is staying on with them for the time being. He's about a length away. Now, Blackheart Blackheart Bart as he makes his way down the side. He has increased the tempo a little bit more. He leads by a couple, maybe a little bit more than a couple to Winks, but Bowman sitting pretty confidently on the Great Bear, and he or she about a length and a half to two further back. So gradually, he is starting to wind the pace up on Blackheart Bart. He leads by two, but comfortably Winks goes with him, and he or she now just starting to be niggled at to try and stay with them as they come to the 600. Bowman sitting supremely confident on the favourite as he idles up on the outside. Blackheart Bart by about a half to Winks on the outside. Now, is she going to be given a race or not? They swing wide the pair of them and they've left he or she behind, but around the turn, Blackheart Bart straightened up about a half in front of Winks. Now Bowman's just asking her to go and she sidles up at the 200 metres. Blackheart Bart trying to really go with her, but Winks now with about 150 to go, drew a neck in front. Blackheart Bart won't go away, but Winks is too good, far too good. She scared her rivals away and she blew them away when they got there by two lengths. Second to Blackheart Bart, he or she third. There's the unbroken dozen at eight. Yeah, 12 in a row. It's just about what we expected, isn't it? There were no surprises in the race. It's about the way we thought the race would be run. It's certainly the trifecta. This was the moment you thought, OK, has she got him? And she has. He tried to kick. He couldn't. He's a three-time Group 1 winner, but she's a champion and he's a very good horse. All credit to Black Heart Bar. He really tried, didn't he? You can see him there, head down, really trying, extending with every stride, but she's just on his outside going, come on, what are you waiting for? It was <laughs> interesting down the side because you knew Hugh Bowman at the 600 was not going to let Bradwell Willis slip away and get that one and a half, two lengths and try and uh, get that break where Hugh was under pressure at any time. He, it was a working track gallop right at Black Art Bart's girth. What was interesting for me was Black Art Bart said, hang on a minute, what are you doing outside me at the 500, the 400? He wanted to lay out onto her and, and really make a, have a little bit of a bumping jewel and make it tough for her. She said, hey, big boy, get back in your box. I'm the queen of the turf. And when Hugh was able to give her one left hand, that's the first time that was brilliant. She just responded like a champion. That she is, Sammy Highland is with Hugh Bowman. Hugh Bowman winks. What an outstanding mare she is. Tell us about that race, uh, an interesting race it was. It was an interesting race, and look, there wasn't much pace early, and everyone predicted that, but there was enough that I could just follow Brad, and he built the, he built the speed from about the 12, 1100 metre mark, which suited me because it allowed my mare to get in, into a nice rhythm, but it was still going to be a sprint home, and that's why I pulled out sort of approaching the 600, because I've got a healthy respect for my position here today, and... Um, you know, I, I thought if I let, let him just dictate to the, you know, inside the 600, you know, may, maybe I can't run him down. But she got a little uncomfortable on the corner, which Sydney horses can do here at Caulfield. And when you watch her replay closely, you'll see she swapped legs at a vital stage. But because I got so much confidence in her, I was able to just help her through that period and wait till she was balanced and um, bring on the Cox Plate now in two weeks' time. And you touch on that, how maybe she was just a little bit touchy on the bends. She feels a better horse at Mooney Valley, in your opinion? Well, she did. Um, she, she did, but like I said, it was, the, the pressure really went on today as we went around that corner. And like I said, she was looking for her Sydney leg and uh, as, as the pressure went on. And, you know, it was just a little awkward for me and her for, for a moment. Not that I thought I was in trouble, but I just had to keep a balance around the corner. But... Um, she didn't have that trouble last year in the Cox Plate, and I'm certainly hopeful she doesn't again this year. Well done, Hugh. Thank you, Sam.
Big performance there by uh, Huey Bowman. Winks, Chris Waller joins me now. Chris, if I had the heart rate monitor on you throughout that race, what would the reading be? Um, very fluctuating. <laughs> Redlining at certain points, including right up to probably the 300 metre mark. When I saw Brad Rewilla go for Blackheart Bart, I knew where we had control of the race. Um, and then our horse continued to respond. So it was last 200 was a bit easier than the first 1800. There's been a lot of pressure in and around this horse, isn't it? It's quite remarkable. So when she goes across the line, is it more relief for you than excitement? Yeah, it is. Um, I feel the, the public expectation more than the pressure. Um, just like everyone here today, everyone at home watching at home, I'm a racing fanatic. I know what, what people want. Um, and um, it's good to get the job done. Uh, helps when you've got a superstar horse obviously she makes me look good and Hugh Bowman he's just sensational he doesn't panic he's Mr Cool and I didn't give him any instructions before the race uh, it was as simple as that and, and you got out of the race everything that you wanted to get out of the race apart from the obvious win yeah I did uh, we go on to the Cox Plate now it's great for racing um, and I think everyone will build on it and that's what we're here for the sport and um, if we can't build something off this, I reckon it's going to be a really good spring carnival. We never will. And, and the records, that's her eighth group one. She equals Tullock's uh, winning streak. I mean, these are just unbelievable names. He's gone past Kingston Town. Yeah, this is remarkable. Yeah, it sure is. Um, I don't like to think about it too much, but because uh, it's obviously pretty humbling. But uh, we're very, very privileged to be involved with such a horse. Well, thanks for the uh, being part of the big build-up and congratulations on your Superman. Thank you very much. Yeah, the great Chris Waller there. Simon O'Donnell, Blackheart Bart can't beat Winks in a Cox Plate. No. After that. No. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, only if she wakes up with a virus on Saturday morning and doesn't run. So, you're the connections of Blackheart Bart um, on that gallop. Do you still head towards a Cox Plate? Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Need to sleep on that. <laughs> Can Hartnell beat her? Well, he's... He, in the Cox he, I thought prior to today, and I'm still leaning towards... He has been the best Cox Plate trial I've seen... His Turnbull win at uh, at uh, Flemington. Better than that. Well, yeah, no. I, he, he absolutely smashed that lot by about five. I tell you the good news. I got the trifecta and it paid a dollar thirty. <laughs> um, she was brilliant. We'll get an update from Ben Damon on the Cox Plate shortly from Crown Bet. But uh, the other thing Chris Waller's got to get right here is to add a bit more pressure to uh, the man tra training the, the greatest horse in this country. Is she's had two relatively soft wins the last two runs and, and Hartnell puts a whole new dimension into the Cox Plate that's going to be a strong run tough race. He's got to get her right for the day now. And one horse not to forget Vadimov mm. come okay. off a very good group one win in France the unknown quantity All of that, we've got a fortnight to think about it haven't we it's going to be fabulous and so was she again today Outside Black Heart Bar, Huey talked a moment ago about getting on the wrong leg and then getting to the Sydney leg. Huey's joined me. Um, Chris just talked about the relief. What about for you? Look, uh, it, it's relief, but you know, for me, I'm now thinking about two weeks' time, and you know, I, I gave Black Heart Bart a lot of respect coming today, and that's why I pulled out so far from home to go and put the pressure on him because he's been racing so consistently and. I'm glad I did it because, you know, my, my mare found it a little awkward getting around the corner here and in my experience over the years, Sydney horses can, ha can have more difficulty here at Caulfield than they do at Mooney Valley. And the reason for that is because at Mooney Valley when you start turning, you're already in top gear. Whereas at Caulfield, you sort of ease into the bend and when you start to turn, then the pressure builds and Sydney horses um, can find it difficult. But And even this mare at the, her level... Uh, had, a, had a little bit of difficulty and that's clear on the film for people that know about horses but you know because I had so much horse underneath me I was allowed I was able to help her through the, those few awkward strides rebalance her and you know I even felt felt for the whip inside the furlong just to make sure she 
surge to the line because uh, as much respect as I have for Blackheart Bart, Hartnell's a different kettle of fish. No, that, that's a fair comment. I mean, he's a three-time group winner, but Hartnell's been doing big things. She's a clean winner. I mean, did she have a blow afterwards, Huey? Did she need that hit out? Uh, she had a blow, and look, that's only her third race start this time in. So, in my opinion, she's going to have improvement from that. And for me... Uh, although I expected to win, my mindset, win, lose or draw, was to ensure that she had a good, firm race and a, and a race that she felt, and there's no doubt she did. And, you know, she had a good blow after it. Her recovery was good, but I, I'm sure she'll know tonight and tomorrow morning that she's been to the sports and, and competed at a high level, and, you know, I, I'd like to think we can not go up a notch in two weeks' time. Can't wait for that, Huey. Thank you for giving us your time again today. You're mate. welcome. Thank you, Bruce. All the best. So those final divvies, it was $1.30 the trifecta, believe it. Well, you would believe it, wouldn't you? And $1.20 the Quinella. So Winks in the M goes for 12 in a row. And she's played OK. I mean, if you've been backing her all the way through, her price has stood up. There's a Quinella at $1.20 and the trifecta at $1.30. Ben Damon. So, Ben, what does it do to the Cox Plate market from Crown Bet? I mean, is, how close are they together, Winks and Hartnell? Yeah, the buzz as she hit the straight there and Huey went for it and got for home. Well, they've all looked towards this next race in two weeks' time and that's going to be a really special occasion. Of course, Winks takes on another star in Hartnell. It was two fifty, plays $3 before that race. Winks, because of that performance, has just firmed into $2.25. Hartnell stays at $3. Vadimos, the X Factor, $11 at the moment. Blackheart Bart has just eased out a couple of points to $13. And if you think he or she can do the remarkable, and not only get a Cox Plate start, but turn the tables on those two. $51 about the third place getter from today. But two twenty-five pays plays $3 in the Cox Plate. So this is a moment ago. This is Tamsin Mills, who's... Uh a huge Winx fan and she just met with Huey Bowman after he gave us the interview and a uh, lovely, lovely moment. And so she just loves Winx and uh, she is all dressed up like Huey today, eh? And uh, she gets to meet him and uh, Huey responding like the champ he is. So great stuff there. To horse racing and Prince of Penzance's Melbourne Cup defence is over after the seven-year-old fractured a leg at Caulfield today. The Darren Weir trained horse finished fourth in the Herbert Power Stakes, but a vet check revealed it'll require surgery and is out of the spring carnival. In the million dollar Caulfield Guineas, Divine Profit held off the fast finishing Seaburge to claim victory in the Group 1 race. Seaburge, Seaburge flies home, they come to the line together, Divine Profit just won it in a photo finish from Seaburge and Haydock. In the Thousand Guineas, Philly Global Glamour won a tight race and Mayor Winks won its 12th consecutive race in the Caulfield Stakes in a field of just three horses.